When I came into the office this morning, I enjoyed this colour scheme. So apparently this is called Spring Blossom. So I had a bit of a look and it turns out we got some other options as well. We have Savannah Sunset. Ooh. Tropical Twilight. Well, what about fancy a bit of Arctic Aurora? All great, but in my opinion, you can't beat a good bit of office default. Right. Welcome to Exposure Ninja. How long does SEO take? Hmm. Maybe as long as this? This? Ping. This? And no, that's not an announcement. Well, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing some stats that we've pulled from our client SEO campaigns to give you a bit more of a detailed answer. Because how long does SEO take is a very common question. We all want to rank quickly and it's scary investing time and money into something where you don't see an immediate return. If we contrast it to something like pay-per-click advertising, for example, which still isn't immediate, but you can immediately get some ads showing up, SEO is a much longer time scale thing to do. So how do you know if you're smashing your head against the wall for six months about to break through, or you're just smashing your head against the wall? <laughs> well, the general consensus answer within SEO is that you need to allow between six to 12 months to see ranking improvement. In fact, Google's own recommendations from Miley Oye say that you need to allow between four and 12 months to see a significant improvement. Hold on, four to 12 months. Well, that's a really big difference. Four months is great. 12 months is like three times as long though. So what's the real answer? Well, we wanted to dig into the data to see not only how long SEO took, but what were the commonalities between the fastest moving campaigns? So that's exactly what we're gonna share in this video. How long does SEO take? What are the factors that impact how long SEO takes? And how can you speed it up? Okay, so here's the short answer to the question how long SEO takes. If you're being aggressive and you're starting from a very low base, then usually you're able to see ranking improvement within a very short period of time, i.e. three months or less. If however, you're in a much more competitive market and you already have the basics covered, then it'll take much longer to see gains, typically eight months plus. If you want some data, then the average Exposure Ninja SEO client that does SEO for more than six months sees a 30% increase in their organic traffic. Now, of course, you expect caveats in a video like this, and here are they. We actually found that there's no such thing as typical SEO results with our clients. Actually, people's experience was dramatically different and there are lots of different variables. Now, it can be frustrating when you ask an SEO company, how long does SEO take? And they say, oh, I don't know. Well, here's the thing. There are so many dependencies, even giving averages feels, to be honest, a little bit misleading. Because across the client data that we reviewed, actually very few campaigns looked like the average Average of all of the data. Instead, we found that campaigns tended to broadly follow one of two paths, which I'll show you in a couple of minutes. Now, if you're watching these caveats thinking, hold on, Tim, you've just pretty much written off the usefulness of this video. Hold up. I actually don't think it matters how long SEO takes on average, because you're probably watching this because you just want to speed up your SEO, right? <laughs> well, I'm going to share with you the commonalities amongst the campaigns that sort the fastest improvements later on. And finally, at the end, I'm going to give you tips on how to get this stuff moving as quickly quick as possible. So stay tuned. Okay, so first things first, what impacts how long SEO takes? What is the difference between the slowest SEO results and the fastest ones? And how can you move yourself into the fastest ones? Well, we noticed a few different variables which had extreme impact on the speed of SEO results. Now, variable number one is gonna seem ridiculous because it's so obvious, and that is how quickly you're able to make changes to your website. Because here's the thing, focusing on on-site SEO, which is usually where you can see the fastest initial improvement, requires changes to be made to the website. Now we've got clients that are like one man bands and we've got clients that are huge multi-billion dollar companies. And guess who's able to make the changes to their website quickest? Yes, it's usually the small businesses because they're just like, okay, well I can just do that or you can just do that. Whereas as soon as you get to large enterprise clients, changes to the website require a whole process going through legal and all this and all this. And as we know, as soon as anything has to go through legal, all bets are off. So the faster you're able to make changes to your website, the faster you're able to enjoy the benefits of those changes. The second variable, again, might seem quite obvious, but it's worth saying, is how much time or energy or money you're able to invest in your SEO. In one breakdown of the stats, we noticed that our very smallest SEO campaigns 
By the end of the first year, they'd seen a 75% increase in monthly organic traffic. Contrast this with the largest SEO campaigns, which actually saw an 864% increase in monthly traffic you can see that going at this thing with more firepower inevitably gets you bigger results this is fairly obvious if you need to add more content to your website you can add a little bit more content or you can add a whole freaking load more content if you need more links to your site you can either get a few links or you can get loads of links so obviously the more firepower you're bringing to the party the more you are likely to win if you're the sort of person that brings firepower to a party an seo party that's my kind of party Actually, an SEO party sounds really boring. Variable number next is how competitive your market is. Now, people tend to think of SEO as in you're trying to increase your website ranking against a whole bunch of static results in Google search. Right, it's a bit like a ladder and you just climb up it. The thing is, it's not really like a ladder. It's more like a race in that all the other competitors are moving as well. If everybody is pushing forward with their SEO, if everyone's investing in stuff, then it's much more like a race in that all the other competitors are moving, whereas on a ladder, all the other rungs are just stationary, so you just climb up them. Now, the next thing that defines how quick SEO is, is actually a little bit counterintuitive. If you're working from a very low base, you actually tend to see faster results than someone who is working from a much larger base. So why is this so? Well, usually the fastest way to increase any website's ranking is to pick the low hanging fruit. Things like amount of content on pages, page titles or meta descriptions, headings, that type of thing. Very quick to generate improvements from those sorts of optimizations. Whereas once you get to a site that's maybe had all of those basics taken care of and now they're relying on a massive content marketing strategy, those are the sorts of things which take much longer time to have an impact. So this is why we tend to see our clients falling into these two different categories rather than all following the average curve. We get the sites that have a lot of low hanging fruit, so we're able to generate some nice quick improvement. And then we get the sites where they've got the low hanging fruit, they've got the basics covered, they're well established, and therefore they're relying on the more advanced strategies which tend to take time for the effects to accumulate. And the final variable is how well SEO'd your competitors are. Obviously, if your competitors have loads of links and loads of content, then it's gonna take much longer to improve against them than if they have absolutely nothing in place. So for those of you in the IT support industry, high five. So before talking through how long SEO takes for these two different types of sites, I just wanted to talk about some of the different ways that you can track the progress of your SEO. Now, the first is using something called organic visibility, which is a metric used by SEMrush, and you can get a trial of SEMrush if you go to thankyouninjas.com. Now, SEMrush is a tool that we use at Exposure Ninja to track organic visibility for our clients. And it's basically a percentage number, which is a bit of an indication about how visible you are for the keywords that you're tracking against. So for example, a keyword visibility of 100% means that you're ranking at the top of Google for every single keyword that you're targeting. Whereas a visibility of 0% means that you're ranking outside the top 100 positions for every keyword that you're tracking. So this kind of percentage visibility can be quite a useful read for how your site's doing and how quick your SEO is progressing because what it does is show you movement before you might notice a traffic increase. So if, for example, you move a ranking page from position 100, so that's on bottom of page 10 to position 65, which would be fifth on page seven, you might not notice a ranking improvement because you're still on page seven, but actually you've done a lot of work to get there. So you'll see that in your organic visibility before you notice an increase in traffic or conversions. Having said that, tracking organic traffic through Search Console to see exactly how many clicks each of your pages is getting and where they're ranking is a great thing to do as well. And this is another one of the metrics that we track for our clients here at Exposure Ninja. Another great way of tracking organic ranking improvement is through organic conversions, i.e leads and sales that have come through your organic traffic. At the end of the day, conversions, i.e. leads or sales, is all you really care about. So we do like to track this, and this is our kind of primary metric that we measure and celebrate inside Exposure Ninja. Having said that, of course, conversions can also be influenced by changes to conversion rate made by conversion rate optimization. So there are other variables at play with organic conversions, which is why we tend to use this mixture of different organic traffic metrics to measure how long SEO is taking. So you can track your SEO in Google Analytics, Search Console, and SEMrush. So what I wanted to do is show you some different graphs from different clients of ours, which represent the different kind of situations that we see websites in. 
In this first example, you can see a brand new website for a business. Well, the website had been around for a little while, but it had never really been fully promoted. Now, as you can see, this site saw fairly significant and consistent improvement throughout the year. In fact, uh, monthly organic traffic went from about 600 visits per month to uh, over 16,000 visits per month during the course of the first year. Now, even though it saw pretty steady improvement, it still had months of drops. In fact, in the first month of SEO, actually traffic dropped a little bit. And then it also dropped uh, between months five and six as well. So it's important to note that even if your SEO campaign is going really well, there are going to be times when your traffic drops. This could be due to ranking fluctuations. This could be due to seasonal variations in the amount of people searching for what it is that you sell, particularly if that drop coincides with a holiday like Christmas or something like that. So don't worry too much if you do see some drops. These are completely normal and consistent across all of the campaigns that we've ever run. Now, the reason that results improve so quickly for a brand new site without any marketing is that they're starting from such a low base. So in percentage terms, an increase from 600 visits a month to 900 visits per month is a 50% increase. Yes! But actually in real terms, it's a very small increase. Well, exactly the same with an established website. You might increase an established website's visitors from 100,000 to 101,000 a month, well, that's only a 1% increase. So you might be thinking, huh, but actually in real terms, that increase is bigger than the first example for the brand new website. So it's much easier to show a large percentage increase for a brand new website than it is a more established website. And because the new website has loads of low hanging fruit available, it's also much quicker to generate big changes in ranking. Now in this graph for an established website, you'll notice that actually the increase was much, much more gradual. They saw a reasonable increase over the first few months, but then things plateaued for quite a long time. Then in month seven, they actually saw a fairly chunky drop, at which point, you know, total panic, exposure ninja are crooks, this isn't working anymore, help, 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 my hair's on fire type thing, but fear not, because then the site saw a really healthy increase as a result of all the content that we've been putting onto the site and the knowledge base that we launched. So with an established website, it does really depend on how much SEO has been done before, how much of that low hanging fruit has already been picked and how much content there is as well. So the big question obviously is why does SEO take so long and how can we speed it up? So why does SEO take so long? Well, if we think about what goes into SEO, we see that there are really two reasons that SEO takes so long. So let's just imagine that we're working on a typical website and we wanna improve its ranking. The first thing that we might do is do some analysis to see where it's currently ranking and where the opportunities are based on competitors. We might do some keyword research. We then might do a content audit of the site as well as a UX audit. We'll then do some content planning. We'll then write the content, get it approved, edited, published onto the site. Once it's been published onto the site, it then needs to be crawled and indexed, which then takes time before that shows up in the ranking. We might then need to build links to that content to improve its ranking on Google. So we've got two types of reasons that SEO takes so long. The first is that a lot of stuff is involved, right? It's a lot of work to do that. It's not just like, oh, just click the SEO button and ping, the site is optimized. But then even once that work has happened, it takes Google search results time to reflect that work in the rankings. So after all of this, what is my advice to you? My advice to you is go hard and don't wait. We know that there is a delay between putting the work in and getting the results. So with that in mind, you wanna get started on this stuff as soon as you're able to do it. And then of course, stick at it even if things don't seem to be moving or even if, dun dun dun, you notice a drop in organic traffic. This is actually fairly typical amongst the sites that we've analyzed for this study. So don't be alarmed at all by that keep going and as long as you're confident that you're doing good work, you should see things come back stronger. You're only ever a few really good posts away from blowing up your traffic or finding that content angle that really turbocharges you and helps your ranking. We've seen this time and time again with our clients. There'll be an 80-20 kind of rule going on with particularly blog content where 20% of their posts will be driving 80% of their traffic and their conversion. So it's just the case of keep on trying to work out what sorts of content is gonna help you rank, what sort of stuff is gonna get the best quality visitors onto your site, which you can then convert 
with a commercial call to action. We've got tons of videos and information about how to do this, so I'd encourage checking those out. Above all, don't be disheartened. SEO is still, in my mind, one of the most important digital marketing channels for any business because the quality of the traffic is just so good. So don't be disheartened that it takes time. Luckily, you are more patient than your lazy competitors. I can just see it. So you're going to do absolutely fine. And by the way, if you're watching this thinking, oh, this looks a bit much, can you just do it for me? Absolutely, we can give you some free advice and get you on your way. The first thing that you want to do right now is go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review. There'll be a link in the description. That's ExposureNinja.com forward slash review. Tell us a bit of information about your business and your goals, and we will go and identify your top low hanging fruit for SEO, conversion rate optimization, pay-per-click and we'll also have a look at your competitors. This service is totally free of charge. There's no catch. There's no sneaky naughtiness or anything like that. Go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review. Tell us a bit about your business and your goals and one of our team will record you a 15 minute video showing you where you should be focusing your digital marketing on right now to get the sort of results that we're looking at. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. We post regularly to this channel. We also host live workshops on YouTube where we give feedback on people's websites. So subscribe to the channel, click the little notification icon and you will get notified when we are running those in the future. If you like filling your ears as well as your eyes with digital marketing information, then you can check out the Exposure Ninja podcast. Just search Exposure Ninja podcast. I don't need to tell you how to find a podcast anymore in 2020. Go and like it and subscribe it. Leave a rating if you enjoy it and see you soon.